out on the sea searching for something that really found me i didn't know it but it drew me to it soon i was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. There's an old saying that if you want to catch a big fish, you catch a little fish first and use it for bait to catch a bigger fish. This saying can't be truer than when you're looking for some trophy barracuda. Today I'm out with my good friend Michael Kumar. Michael is from the Fiji Islands and he knows how good saltwater fishing can be. On this trip, we're going out in the Gulf of Mexico and we have barracuda on the brain. Michael is a man of many talents and one is that he's an amazing chef. So our goal is not just to catch some barracuda, but to keep one or two smaller ones for him to prepare exotically. Challenge number one, we had windy conditions again, and gulf waters are stirred up, which won't make finding bait fish easy. We're on a near shore reef where we've marked predator fish on the surface. This is a good sign. If the predators are there, the bait fish should be there. Fish finder on, we're scanning the waters. Michael is using a sabiki bait fish rig on the bottom. I'm casting a silver lure to see if I can locate some feeding mackerel on the surface, which would also indicate suspended schools of bait fish. So I cast and twitch my lure, Michael jigs on the bottom, and before you know it, smack, I've got a fish on. Nice hit. I love it when they hit like that, Michael. Keep casting, Michael. Cast, cast out the back. There might be a school of them there. You know, I'm out here with Michael Kumar. He's a good friend. He just arrived, and we thought he'd come out here and just see what's happening out here in the Gulf. Sure enough, we started casting the lures over a reef, and we got the first one on. Beautiful, brilliant fish. Come here. Such a gorgeous fish. Okay, I'm gonna launch him, Michael. He's gonna be gone. There he goes. Okay. Good thing for the mackerel that we're hunting for barracuda. So I continue to cast. Michael continues to jig on the bottom. Hey, we're in the shade. Oh, something big's going for it. Oh, no. oh my God, look at big that. cuda. Oh, oh, man. What was it? It's still after it. Big oh, good. it's a cuda. Big cuda. Huge cuda. Oh, God. <laughs> Look it, that was a great fight. Uh, not enough for soup. There we go. Uh, kind of interesting. Where did I put my pliers here? From the looks of things, these scudas are starving. And judging from the size of mackerel they're smashing, I think we're gonna need bigger bait fish. Man, Michael, the screen is on fire. Look at all we of got them. bait fish up top. We got game fish down below. Wow. So trying to hook try... up here. Yeah, make long cast. Let it sink a little bit because some of the bigger fish are down underneath. There's no better way to get your fishing buddy adrenaline going than hooking two fish back to back. You know he's anticipating a hit at any time. Either this is a smaller fish or something hit it. No, it's a smaller one. That's so cute. Where is he? He's just behind the boat. Well, smaller. Good eating size. It's right there. Are you casting still, oh, Michael? Oh, yeah, I am. Look at this. I can't wait for you to hook your first one, Mike. I know. They're so much fun. Oh, big fish going up. That, that cuda's back. Oh. oh, they got it. You got him. Man. These and guys you know are what? So I aggressive. think 
I think that, look at this cuda. This, it looks like a big black log. It, uh, I think the cuda see the lure, because they just hit the back end of the fish. Okay, you know what? We gotta get the fish in when, it, when uh, we get one on. Look at this. You think the cuda could get its own food? What we're doing, we were casting and getting some mackerel. We spotted so many bait fish, and these are really good bait fish. It's called a greenback. I'm going to put these in the live well, because that's exactly what we want. Finally, we've got into some nice greenback bait fish, and we're hooking up a few at a time. This is when you must capitalize on catching as many as you can before the bait fish school moves off. Oh, greenbacks. Good. A lot of them. Good. Oh, actually two, and then the other one's a butter. So I think I got the right species here, Ayatel. Eh, yes, greenbacks, beautiful. Let me put them in a live well. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. All right. Let's build up our stockpile. Oh, yes, they're quite lively. That's why, oh, yeah. that's why the mackerel probably like eating them, right? Oh yeah. yeah. We've caught a couple dozen bait fish and we're ready to rig them and fish them. We just get the first rod set and kabam! The drag starts sizzling off and Michael is into his first nice cuda. All I, all I, I didn't even see, I just heard it. Yeah, yeah. Put on a show for me, yes. Oh, wow, look at this guy. He has some shoulders Might on, I tell you. Might be a big you. cuda. I'm not sure, but you know what? This is a change from sea lead fishing in Ontario. Wow. You think a little oh, bit? Jesus, yeah. I was a little hesitant when, you know, Move, move your, move okay. up to the right, yeah? Just a little bit more, a little bit more. That's it. Jeez. Oh, wow, this guy has weight now You're for sure. Great. Thank you. I'm guessing it might be a big cuda. I'm guessing. I could be wrong. So brilliant, eh? Look at the shine on it. Easy, yeah, yeah. He's probably going to take off, so get ready, OK? Yep. When I touch him the first time, uh, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't. Uh, wow. Good job. Here. Awesome. Does he have any teeth? Just a little. I'm not going to get my fingers too close to it, but... Wow. Great. Okay, you know what? I'm going to try to hold it right here. Yep. You if you can, Yeah, if you can put the rod down. Okay. Pliers are there. Yep. All right. You be careful, okay, if it thrashes. It's got the treble in its mouth, and it's got the single. Okay, there's one. Yeah, try not to... Yeah, watch the wire. Just grab it right on the bend, if you can, yeah? There. Okay. Oh. oh. Good job. I rehooked him. <laughs> Perfect. Unfortunately. There. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, come on back here. Okay. We can get both of us in the shot here. Let's yeah. go to Cuda. I know you've caught Cuda with me before, but that's the first time on a center pin, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Kind of right. in the shade here, which is nice. Look at it, isn't that a nice Cuda? That's amazing. And on a float reel. Did you see the way it exploded when it I hit? heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Amazing. What are these dots on its head? That's just the spots. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Michael? Look at all the bait fish. The whole time, you know, while you were fighting your fish. See the bait fish down there, Michael? I see them. Amazing. What a gorgeous animal. We're going to let it revive a little bit. That water is yeah, so clear. fought really hard. Oh, yeah. When he hit, he just exploded. So I just want to make sure. I could lunge him. There he goes. goes right Beautiful. into the school of bait. Look at, look at that. We rig up again, let our baits out slowly, pull our baits just below the surface, about two to three miles an hour, and bang. Again, we have another cuda on. Nice head shakes. Was that kind of exciting there? That was awesome, wasn't it? You think it? it's another cuda? I don't know. No. I don't know, it could be. What, what a nice change, eh? From yesterday, we were fishing the mangroves. Mm -hmm. Asking for trout. Yep. Now you come out here. Yep. It's a gorgeous day. The wind is settling down. Is. To me, this is the whole experience. Right? I agree. Best plus, of both worlds, right? Plus, whatever fish we end up taking home, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you cook them. You feel like making some fish soup tonight? I, I do. That'd you, be awesome, wouldn't it? You might I, even have to get some ingredients. Mm, you know, that's okay. But that's we'll okay. just go to the Publix. I think they may have. Good, good. I'm hoping this may be a mackerel. I don't know. It's not fighting like a mackerel. Michael, look at this cuda. It's look at huge. how wide it is. What a gorgeous fish, eh? Okay. You got him? Hold I, on. I got Hold it. on. <laughs> Don't let go. Oh, Don't let go. It. Don't let go. Are you aiming it up for the camera? 
<laughs> you, look at you know, this. What, a what is this? A oh Point God. it over here so I can look at its teeth. Oh, yeah, it does have teeth. Wow. What a big oh, wow. head. OK, hold that position, OK? All right. What I we're going to do is get the hooks out. I'm just going to get the pliers. I got them right here. Yeah, he's got really good teeth. You know what? He's got a good dental plan. <laughs> I bet you he hasn't been eating any candy, right? OK, got one out now. Yeah, he, he took that bait. No wonder we heard that real just scream. He says, uh, don't break any of those teeth. I need them. Man, what a nice fish. You watch. What a gorgeous cuda. Thanks for the fight, buddy. Yep. Awesome fish, Beautiful. isn't that? Yep. This is what I fell in love with. It. I know, I know. Me too. Being out here, experiencing this. All right, I can feel him. Can you feel him? Ready? He wants a kick, yeah, just let him go. There he goes. What a nice release. I've just discovered Michael is a quick learner. He watched me hook a bait fish up on a rig, tried hooking one on himself, which produced a fish, and now I'm putting him on the spot and have him demonstrate how it's done. Michael, take it away. I'm gonna watch that thing. Now I'm fortunate today to be fishing with Master Ketch Kumar. He's a master chef, master fisherman, salmon fisherman, steelheader. And now he's a Cuda saltwater expert. Okay, show everybody how we're rigging the fish on these really light wire. Let me get it, grab it. Green back here. Yep. You can do it. I can do it. You got two. I get pick one. Get one I, I like the guys. way you go for the big one. Yes. Yeah, here, I'll get the other one out. Okay, now right. what are you gonna do first? So, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the single from behind its head, about a quarter inch down, pierce through, yep. all the way out. Perfect. Then what I do next is I hold the hook. Yep. Come across, leave, leave a little bit of slack here, I was told. Yes. And try not to get too many scales off, because it's important exactly. that you have all the shine as possible. Same thing, quarter inch. Yeah, and right through. Right through. Can we see that point? Perfect, OK. Let it hang like that. Let's see how it looks. There you go. That looks perfect. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. We had a great time messing with those mackerel, finding our bait fish, and finally fighting a few nice-sized barracuda. Fighting all those fish can make you hungry. And now it's time to head back and see what Chef Kumar has up his sleeve. First things first is getting those fish off ice and bending them back into shape so they can make for easier cleaning. Michael starts by making an incision just behind the head and works the knife right through the vertebrae to separate the head from the body. No easy task since those vertebrae are pretty thick. Next he uses the scaler and starts scaling the fish from the tail towards the front of the fish. No finesse here. Michael is a big guy and he's using his muscle to get the scales off both sides. Once the body is scaled, Michael removes the dorsal fin, the anal fin and the pelvic fins. Smart move since this will eliminate those small fin bones mixing in with the tasty flesh. Once the fins are removed, he makes a cut along the belly and removes the entrails, being careful to scrape the bloodline off the vertebrae. Michael is careful to cut the steaks evenly, about one and a half inches thick, so that they'll cook at the same rate. As he gets closer to the tail, the vertebrae is thinner and a little easier to cut. I like how he's lining up those steaks in a nice row. Both Michael and I love blue crab and no part of the fish is going to waste. The head and even the entrails are placed in the crab trap to attract another tasty dinner. Crab trap filled, they're placed in the canal and it's time to work on the recipe. There's nothing like using fresh organic fixings and Michael has plenty of nice green mangoes he's going to be using for his recipe. Okay, onions, tomatoes, red pepper, green peppers, hot peppers, ginger, thyme, cilantro, garlic, green onions. Man, the list goes on and on. Michael wasn't kidding when he said he would make a delicacy for us. He starts by cutting up the green onions, next the cilantro, and then the thyme. He then surprised me by taking the garlic, peeling off the husk, and instead of chopping it up, he carefully grates it. Very interesting. Next, he takes the peppers, cuts them open, removes the seeds. That's where all of the heat is stored. Looks like he's going more for flavor than for heat. He cuts up the peppers into slices and mixes all the cut ingredients in a bowl. 
Next, they're all placed in a food processor and zzz, they're all blended together. Fresh lime is squeezed onto the fish steaks, a little water is added, and the fish is gently mixed to absorb the diluted lime juice. He takes the blended ingredients from the food processor and mixes it into the fish pieces. While the fish pieces are absorbing the ingredients, Michael starts to work on preparing the mango by cutting it into chunks. The tomatoes are cut into thick slices along with the onions. Then you gotta have more hot peppers. This time he takes those thin red ones, I like to call them little devils. Guess why? He removes the seeds and adds them to the mix. Can't forget the ginger. Michael carefully removes the peel and cuts them into chunks. I should have known curry was going to be one of the main ingredients. This is going to be tasty. Wow, easy buddy. That's half the bag of curry mixed into some lime juice. I hope we can still taste the fish. Anyone like garlic? Michael does. Okay, more garlics. Let's grate it and add it to the curry just to give it, you know, more zing. Aha, now the garlic is grated and added to the curry and garlic. What? He doesn't even cut up those hot, thin red peppers? I hope I don't bite into one. Okay, he's prepared all the fixings. Now it's time to coat the fish pieces and fry them. Is he just using a normal fish coating? Not Michael. He's adding so many spices, it looks like a science experiment. The fish pieces are individually dipped in the special coating mix, placed on a skillet with a little hot oil on the bottom. The fish pieces are pretty thick, so they're allowed to cook at a medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. The fish is turned to expose the golden brown finish and the other side is allowed to cook. Next, the onions are sauteed in the skillet and part of the curry mix is added and stirred until it's slightly reduced and then the rest of the curry mix is added. He adds two cans of coconut milk and lets the flavors cook together on low heat. Michael takes the green mangoes and adds it in small pieces and adds a few stalks of lemongrass. Lastly, he gently places the chunks of seared barracuda steaks and turns the heat to low. Yes, it's time to try this amazing recipe. While Michael was preparing this amazing barracuda recipe, my responsibility was to entertain our dinner guests, keeping them hydrated and trying not to salivate too much in front of our company. After all, I could smell all of those seasonings and that fish being seared in the pan. But the wait is over and it's time to feast. Bring it on, Michael. Michael, I hate to tell you this, but it's about time. I've well, been sitting here, we've been chatting and everything. I'm like, what is he doing in there? Come on. What I tell on. you, Rome wasn't built in one day, and my masterpiece takes a little bit of time. Wow. But okay. I tell you, you're gonna enjoy this. So I have to be honest with you, this is a treat because normally I clean the fish, I prepare the fish. I eat the fish with whoever I'm with. So I know this that. Was, look, I got to change. I know, and you smell beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's cologne. Yeah, it's Axe. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I got I got the chance to shower. Normally, I don't get a chance to do that. Well, so me. what about what? How are we going to drink this? How are we going to eat it? So this type of cooking requires because it's a hearty type of meal, and um, in, in the Caribbean, this type of soup slash you know eating with rice yeah. um, requires the the bones and the actual steak itself. So I decided to steak it. So I went aside from your your wishes. I follow. Oh, so after cleaning it, I, I seasoned it up with yeah. the seasoning that you brought. Well, the, the raw materials, if you will. So I took the green onion, yeah. I took the cilantro, I took garlic, I took ginger, I took the green and red peppers, and I ground it up. Is it hot? Well, I'm talking about spicy hot? It, it's going to have a little bit of heat to it, but I try to mellow it down with a little bit of lemon, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of lime, and then the coconut milk. So I, you know, I know in the past I've made something similar for you, yeah. but this also has a little bit of something special. You know what that special is? I don't know. Organic mango, right from oh, your hey, backyard. I saw, you. I saw you was cleaning the boat. Yeah. I saw you got the mango. So I saw that and I cut it up and I put it in here with some tomatoes. Is it in pieces? Or no, is it's it... right there. Look at it. It's right, oh, right, right here. There. Yes. Okay, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So you don't mind if I try it? Go right ahead. Before we talk about the monster kudas that you caught today and that we're eating. Okay, this is a taste test, okay? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Thank you. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's a little tickle in the back of my Just throat, a little but not tickle, bad. Right? Yeah, it's not okay, intense. so the steak is right. This is the mango. I'm going to try a piece mm -hmm. of mango. Try that mango. I'm going to take a bite. Yeah. That's your mango. I've never tasted mango like that. Green mango yeah. that's been cooked. Green green mango in the actual coconut curry. There's the steak. Hold on yes. a sec. So, what we're having, everyone, this is barracuda. Some people are shaving barracuda because of something called ciguatera, 
which is a toxin that barracuda can have. But most of the time, those toxins that in barracuda are built up when they're around reefs and they're eating reef fish that have been eating different kinds of algae that are on the coral and stuff. So the barracuda can get infected and then it can be nasty for humans. But if they're open ocean or even open gulf barracuda, the chances of them having ciguatera is very low. How's a barracuda? Wow, right? very good. I must say, this is the first time I'm eating barracuda. It's not nice. It's amazing. I tell people it tastes like chicken breast, but it doesn't. It's nicer. It's, it's, it's very, very nice. firm. You asked me if it was fatty, it's not fatty. Nope, not at all. So we caught several big cuda, over yeah. 20 pounds. Yeah. And I was amazed that you actually grabbed that one with your hands, brought it up, oh. you know, we got it all on camera and stuff. And I said, I hope we get a smaller one. Mm -hmm. I don't know, how big do you think the one that we kept was? I say about 10 pounds. Yeah, and I, I mean, we were struggling to get a, a smaller one. Yeah. What do you think of their fight? Amazing, amazing. What do you think about the one that chumped off the Spanish mackerel that you had on? Yeah, oh. they're in, they kept coming back. Yeah, what do you it think that two. was? It got two mackerel, I It think. did, that yeah. thing was yeah, about, yeah, yeah. it was hungry. Well, to feed the size of that fish, what, so five feet long? how do they know mm -hmm. to take a chunk out of the back, take a chunk out of the center, and then just leave the head? I don't know. That's got the hook in it. That's they amazing. won't touch it. So they're really smart that way. Oh, yeah. So so what do you think of this Florida thing and this, like, 35 Celsius oh, and stuff? I was just about to say to you, I can get used to this. Why don't you get a place down here? Matter of the... You know what? I'll tell you something. Uh, I just bought a place. I know. I'm teasing you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to keep one of the boats there. No, it's amazing. Look, right now it's not hot. We were sweating out there. We had to drink a lot. We had to put lotion on. Yeah. Right? So, but look at Now it's beautiful. The Noceums are going to be out soon. Oh. Right. God bless not my them. friends. They're, but that's they're not of, friendly. That's part of the experience. Yeah, I guess. So listen, right. it was great fishing with you. I'm going to yes, start likewise. eating, okay? Because this is delicious. Oh, amazing. Even just the broth. Oh, yeah. One day I wandered out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior.